all the children's graveyards, so I can only assume that there's children's spirits out here. Are there any that, that would like to talk to us right now? Are you displeased with the state of repair of your graveyard? Are there any entities here that would like to talk to us? Give us a sign, show us your presence. Graveyards, the final resting place for most after a life of fulfillment or a life cut short. Beautiful sprawling cemeteries lie along most of the major scenic roads in upstate South Carolina. And then in some areas you see graveyards in the most unusual of places, like this cemetery which is located on one of the busiest sections of Pelham Road in Greenville. The locations of cemeteries like this one can make a person ask, how could anyone dead or living rest peacefully here? Maybe in one particular case, the dead are restless amidst a graveyard forgotten by most, but nestled in a location that hundreds, if not thousands, pass by every day. When Cody, Dal, and I began our journey into the ghostly legends of our area, we were fascinated by this strange graveyard which brought us into the heart of the Duncan Chapel Cemetery, otherwise known to residents of this area as the Children's Graveyard. The cemetery, which is now located at the corner of Old Buncombe Road and Duncan Chapel Road, has become an overgrowth of brush and a haven for some looking to vandalize and disturb the resting place of those who passed on as far back as the early 1800s. Under a canopy of lush trees, tombstones hide from plain sight, markers lie uprooted from the place they originally rested, and the sounds of the outside world bleed in 24 hours a day, not providing any silence for the residents of this graveyard. When we decided to find out more about the Duncan Chapel graveyard, we started our research and began to track down any historian who could tell us more about where this graveyard came from, who was buried there, and why did people believe it was haunted. After months of us not having much luck, we finally found one individual, Patricia Tyson, who agreed to speak to us about the children's graveyard, the church that started it, and the property owner's peculiar wife who makes this story that much more interesting. What happened was before the Civil War, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan had a 16,000 acre plantation and she was a very religious lady. Uh, so she built a chapel on her property and it became known as Duncan's Chapel. And she would have the itinerant ministers, all Methodist, that would come there and preach and she was so involved in it that when nobody showed up, she would do the sermons herself. So they lived there until after the Civil War. Now she was from uh, lower state of Georgia, Albany I think it was, and after the Civil War, they left and went back to Georgia after her, her parents had died. The chapel was constructed in 1847 and was built by the family slaves. Mary Ann Duncan, the wife of Perry Duncan, who gave seven acres of his land for use to build a place of worship and a school, was described to me as an unusual and a very spiritual woman by Patricia and other potential interviews we spoke to that did not agree to go on camera with us. From, from all I know about Mrs. Duncan is just what I've read. Uh, there's nobody here that told me directly anything about her, but the fact is that uh, in, the, in what I read, uh, it seems that she was just very, very religious. And at supper time, all the kids and whoever was visiting had to say a Bible verse before they were allowed to eat. A 
According to an article written by Judith Bainbridge, Mrs. Duncan would prepare an immense dinner for guests in the house to enjoy, and regardless of the amount of people seated at the table, she would call on each one to repeat a Bible verse, and if someone didn't respond, a copy of the New Testament would be passed down the table until an appropriate verse was selected and read aloud. Although her reputation seems to be that she was an odd person, Mrs. Duncan was generous in her nature by devoting her time to organizing and becoming the first president of the Greenville Ladies Association in aid of Confederate volunteers, which gathered food and clothes to send to Greenville troops in Virginia. She then started a rest home in Greenville located in a female college building to help soldiers traveling during the war. With three of her sons serving in the Confederate Army, she eventually traveled to Virginia herself to help attend to the sick and injured and gave final prayers to those who died in battle. During all of her wartime volunteering, she still found time to construct the Duncan Chapel Methodist Church, which also gave way to the Duncan Chapel School in 1878. Although Patricia is very familiar with the Duncan Chapel and the graveyard, she has never seen it. However, a friend described what the chapel looked like and Patricia was able to sketch what the chapel looked like. Well, I haven't seen it. The only thing I have done was uh, have a, a friend came over and told me how the, the uh, chapel itself looked. So I did a sketch back in 1994 of that, the exterior and the interior. You can tell by this photo that her drawing wasn't very different from what the actual chapel looked like. Even though Patricia never set foot near the Duncan Chapel Church or the graveyard, she still has a fascination with its history. It was all gone uh, when I was a child. I started to school at the Duncan Chapel Elementary in second grade, and that was nothing there except the Thaxton home. Patricia is referring to King Thaxton who purchased the property in the early 1900s. After the war, as Mr. and Mrs. Duncan aged into their 60s, they sold the land which the chapel, school, and graveyard resided on and returned to Mrs. Duncan's home in southwest Georgia. After Thaxton purchased the property, church services were still held twice monthly until 1928. By 1950, the church and the graveyard had been abandoned. By this time, the Duncan Chapel was all but gone, the foundation overgrown by weeds, no longer even visible, the graveyard now a forgotten relic, possibly haunted by those who were buried there. Well, I know there's a spiritual realm and that that's possible. We called on our paranormal investigative team, Two Dead Crew, comprised of investigators Shayna Ferguson and Chris Randall to see what evidence they could gather to prove or disprove any haunting at the Duncan Chapel graveyard. We asked what they could tell us about the strange experiences that people have claimed to have seen or heard while there. All I can tell you is what I've read as far as people's experiences and dancing lights and... Children's giggling and voices and stuff wildlife but with the infringement of humanity yeah. I think that's kind of been driven out as well. Yeah, It's really polluted with light and, and noise. Shane and Chris have investigated the children's graveyard prior to our investigation and they both have noticed that people's intrusion into the graveyard was becoming more obvious. Everything's growing up around it and it's becoming smaller. I mean even from when we went out there last year it's been cut down in places and well, it's like you said it's it's the it's the cemetery that time forgot um, it's been constantly uh, you know it's got growth all over the place and it's been constantly uh, vandalized and no one seems to care they don't repair that they you know they don't keep it up there's it's, it's like you said it they just don't it seems like it's been forgotten which is weird because there looked like there was one grave out there that was relatively fresh that had flowers yeah well I've seen people in put it which was really weird toys and stuff out there all the time uh, I've seen we walked out there last year and there was uh, you know stuffed animals right at the entrance during the course of conducting an EVP session which stands for electronic voice phenomenon are you displeased with the state of repair of your graveyard Chris becomes increasingly angry at the condition of the graves and the amount of vandalism he sees at the time this is happening, Shayna was using an EMF meter, which stands for Electromagnetic Field Detector, which they say can detect the presence of ghosts, which are thought to put off electromagnetic energy while trying to manifest themselves. Even though the EMF meter didn't pick up anything, 
Chris's reaction could make a person wonder if angry spirits within the graveyard were using their energy to influence his statements. During this time, Shayna hears something walking behind her which Chris investigates and finds nothing there. Shayna and Cody, who was operating the night vision camera, also claim to feel a drastic temperature change, which Shayna and Chris say can represent the presence of a spirit. The, the, the bad thing about it is, it's hard to address any of the spirits because the tombstone, tombstones have been scattered everywhere. I mean, here you have the tombstone of a five-day-old infant. Obviously, it was placed here, but uh, it was here, but there's no telling where it originally was. And are these? Yeah. I, stones or are they just rocks? No. They're, they're, they're in the ground. Did you hear that? Uh -uh. Oh, like a break or I thought I heard somebody walking down here. Hello? Let me go see if I see anybody. Of course. I'm just checking to see if there's anybody over there. Nobody over there. This is what Chris had to say about the dilapidated conditions of the graveyard in two Dead Crew's post-investigation interview. What's really creepy is the vandalism is so bad, half the graves are unidentifiable. I mean, there's tombstones laying in the middle of paths, you know, that have been apparently blocked off or uh, knocked off and you know remember the, the four stones mm -hmm. that almost just rocks like, yeah they look like uh, rocks that have been like a pauper cemetery almost yeah. two months later the graveyard barely resembles what it did the night of our investigation trees now cut down to stumps what trees remain now leafless and dying the roads and businesses surrounding the cemetery now almost trespassing into the sacred resting ground the broken and knocked over tombstones now more visible, and bulldozers looming over the hill as if waiting for the word to move forward and destroy what is left. The future of the children's graveyard is uncertain, just as uncertain as the evidence gathered by two dead crew. No EVPs were picked up, and other than a few pictures of orbs within the graveyard, all we were left with is the creepy feelings of our paranormal investigators, one of whom appeared to become overwhelmed with feelings of anger and sadness over the state of the children's graveyard. As for Patricia Tyson, she has never stepped foot onto the corner of Old Buncombe Road and Duncan Chapel Road to see what remains of the old church and the graveyard, and it seems that day may never come. You know, you wonder if there are names, and if there are, would you recognize them? And uh, since uh, the one person that came here, uh, they were doing something at the Duncan Chapel Elementary to show the history of the area. And so he had been a member as a child, but uh, I might recognize his parents' name or something like that, but I don't know what condition the stones might be in. But what about the residents of the children's graveyard? The night of our investigation, Shane and Chris saw many toys placed at the base of the graves. Chris even attempts at one point to use a ball as a trigger object to solicit a response from any spirits that were present that night. There's a toy here for you. Do you want to play with the ball? We're going to leave that ball here for you, but we sure would like to see you kick it. And if you ask Patricia Tyson, she believes that if the spirits of children are there, then a playmate may be exactly what they want. If you're a child and you die, you don't know you're dead. See, so that you're just there. And when you hear about uh, children that are seen as ghosts and sort of things, they're wanting to play. So companions wouldn't be a bad thing. Unfortunately, the days for the individuals who are visiting the graveyard to remember those who seem to have been forgotten may be cut short. With the fate of the Duncan Chapel Cemetery uncertain at best, the echoes of the dead that remain there may be silenced forever.